Let's work on question C in this video. What is the excess burden of the tax? So before starting, let's understand what is the intuition of the excess burden here. So this tax, the proportional tax of 20% on income causes a distortion in consumption. What does that mean? When we have a tax on a certain good, right? We have a tax on a certain good, that good becomes more expensive, meaning that we are forced, so to speak, to consume less of it. Not necessarily because we want to consume less of it, but because we have to. This change in behavior <clears throat> is, is a loss in utility, is something we would like to avoid. Now, a way to avoid it is to charge a lump sum tax. And what's the intuition of the lump sum tax? We just pay a fixed amount of money. Because when we pay a fixed amount of money, we still suffer a loss in utility. No one likes giving money away. But at least with less money, we still are going to allocate our resources in such a way that we combine the goods in the ratio that we want. So to speak more practically to this example, we have income and leisure. These are the goods that we care about. We care about money and we care about resting, about leisure. So these are the two goods. We will consider these the goods that we are talking about. So in the beginning, in the beginning, let's just understand this budget uh, thing and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll move on to the math because we have to see how they work together, you know? So in the beginning, when the wage is equal to 20 euros, the maximum amount of money that we could earn is 14,400 euros, right? That's 20 times 720 hours in total. So that's when the wage equals to 20 euros an hour. The yellow line would be the budget constraint before tax. Hope this makes sense. Now, when we have the tax of 20%, it means that the wage decreases by 4 euros. So then when the wage is 16, when the wage is 16, the maximum amount would be 11,520 euros. That's just 16 times the total amount of hours. So the blue line would be the budget constraint after tax. Now, what else do we know? We know the data that maximizes the utility in each cases. So before tax, we saw it in the previous video, that if we have 600 hours of leisure and 2400 euros, that maximizes the utility. And we know we maximize utility when indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. So on the yellow line before tax, when we have 600 hours of leisure and corresponding 2400 euros, we touch this indifference curve to the line. So we are literally on the optimal point. Now, with the same logic, after tax, we would have still 600 hours of leisure, but less money because with taxes, we get less uh, net income. So in that sense, we would still have 600 hours of leisure, but only 1920 euros in income. So this orange indifference curve would touch the second budget line, which is after taxes. Now, what is the difference over here between 2400 and 1920? That's a difference of 480 euros. This is the tax revenue that we are paying, right? This is the tax that we are paying. So this tax equals to 480. That's how it looks like on a graph. Now, why would we have excess burden? Recall, excess burden is because we change our consumption of the goods because of the tax. Meaning, we have a certain income effect, we have a certain loss in utility because we have less money to spend, but we also have a substitution effect because we are forced to consume the good that is not taxed. So we are changing our consumption behavior. And we want to know what that change is going to be. So we're looking for that excess burden. Now, how can we calculate this excess burden? We'll do it in, we'll do it in two steps. First of all, we want to know what would be the amount of money that we are willing to pay so that we have the same utility as when we are charged a proportional tax. In other words, what is the lump sum tax that we are willing to pay to get the same utility as with the proportional tax so that we can have only an income effect meaning we are only willing to give up money without changing our consumption behavior. Now, how can we do so? Well, let's see, we have the data over here with the leisure and the income, and we said we're dealing with utilities. We have the utility function, meaning a wise step would be to find out what is the utility before tax, what is the utility after tax? Well, let's do it over here. Utility before tax, we'll just substitute the data. That's 600. Actually, let's start with income because income comes first over here. That's 2400 to the power 1 over 6. So that's 2400 to the power 1 over 6. And the leisure would be 600 hours to the power 5 over 6. 600 to the power 5 over 6. Let me just zoom out this thing because we'll really need space here. So we do the math over here. What do we get? We would get, um, what was it? 
755, 755.95 units of utility. That would be before tax. Now, same logic goes to find out what's happening after tax. Well, let's see what's happening after tax. The utility after tax. We would substitute the data into the utility function after tax. So we would have 1920 euros to the power 1 over 6. 1920 to the power 1 over 6 times the leisure, which is still 600. 600 to the power of 5 over 6. That's equal to, that's equal to 700. 28.35 approximately so with that said we can we can work further we want to find out the combination of leisure and income such that we reach this utility without changing the consumption uh, behavior without changing the preference between income and leisure and remember we would like to keep the preference that we had before taxes and when we were before taxes that preference was that income is equal to four times the leisure check that in the previous video we found it so income equals to four times the leisure and we would like to achieve a utility as after the tax which is equal to 728.35 so let's do so with all these things with all these things taken together we are moving to the next step meaning that we will use this ratio y equals to 4l and we will use our utility function let's just try the utility function over here that's let me change colors that's going to be y to the power of 1 over 6 y to the power of 1 over 6 times l to the power of 5 over 6 equals to the utility after tax which is 728.35 728.35 now we can use our substitution because we know we know that income equals to 4L, so we could substitute 4L instead of Y over here. So what would we get from that? We would have 4L to the power of 1 over 6 times L to the power of 5 over 6 equals to 728.35. Let's open the brackets here to play a bit with the math. We would have 4 to the power 1 over 6 times L to the power 1 over 6 times L to the power of 5 over 6 equals to 728.35. Now l to the power 1 over 6 times l to the power 5 over 6 is just l meaning we can calculate already our optimal leisure by dividing 728.35 by 4 to the power 1 over 6 so this is a matter of math do it on the calculator we would get 578.09 let's just say one round up you know so that would be the leisure that would be the leisure and the income the corresponding income would be four times as much right the corresponding income over here would be four times as much meaning that the income would be four times 578.1 which would be equal to 2312.4 now with all this data we can plot it on our graph we can plot it on our graph so let's do it where is the graph over here yes so what did we say? We said that to keep the same utility after tax, meaning to be on the same indifference curve, this orange one that I'm, you know, moving on right now, we need 578.1. So we need, we need somewhere over here, 578.1, right? 578.1, uh, that's going to be the leisure that, let me change colors because we need to differentiate this. So like that, 507, where was it? 578.1 and the corresponding income we calculated to be 2312.4 so hope it's visible 2312.4 meaning that we want to decrease we want to decrease our budget constraint by a fixed amount to get to that level and that's our second step to find what is that amount that we can decrease so going from the yellow budget line proportionally downwards because decreasing by a fixed amount means that the slope is still the same it's just that the intercept was, would change right so we would go let me put it something like that hold on hold on we, it would go it would go something like that tangent to this indifference curve through that yell uh, through that white point like that proportionally hold imagine this is a straight line it goes proportionately down and the question is what is this amount this uh, we went we went where, where did we go um, so we want to find out by what amount we are going down this is what we're looking for and we'll do so in the next video where is the